Biggie blew up overnight. You have no origins for what rap planet this guy came from. Spread love, it's the Brooklyn press, son. Yeah, yeah, y'all. Netflix's new documentary, I Got a Story to Tell, focuses on Biggie, who only enjoyed a few years of success and acclaim as one of the best rappers before he was killed in California on March 9, 1997. They got a gifted talent that saved a lot of people's lives, but his. The legendary DJ Mr. C discovered Big in the early 90s while he was working with another one of rap's brightest stars, Big Daddy Kane. When I got to meet Christopher Wallace before he became successful, he was a very shy guy, very shy. He always talked with his head down. C met Big through Big's manager, 50 Grand, in 1991. At the time, he was heading out on tour with Big Daddy Kane. The night that I came home from the tour, I didn't even unpack all my luggage yet. That night, 50 Grand was in front of my house with the demo and wanted me to hear it. Even though Biggie never sounded like Big Daddy Kane, to hear him rhyme to the same beat that me and Kane used for Ain't No Half Stepping. It just showed me back then that he was a student of the game. It was just somebody that respected people that came, the, the other rapper that came, the other greats that came before him, like a Big Daddy Kane. That line from 1994's Juicy summed up how Biggie was able to flip stories of his past. Well, that was just a common thing. Like a lot of a lot of cats from Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, or you know, different, you know, urban parts of, of, of New York City was heavily into selling drugs or whatever the case is. Um, it was it was common. He actually let you know in his lyrics that, you know, this is what I used to do, but this is what I'm doing now. And if you could turn a negative into a positive, by all means, go for it. So when he stopped selling drugs and he started making records and getting with women, that's what he started talking about, making records, getting with women, drinking bottles and, get, you know, riding fancy cars. You understand me oh, yeah. having to sell drugs on the corner to this? He started talking about what he was actually living through. I got a story to tell is a real true story. That is a real true story about him and some Nick player that he had an encounter with, with a Nick player and some girl. That's a true story. So, you know, big, you know, his vision of what he talked about was like basically his real life. It's the one and only Biggie Smalls doing his thing in the rap world. That's right, baby. In only three years, from 1994 to 1997, Big made an indelible impact, not only on hip hop and rap, but other pop and mainstream genres. Los Angeles police are investigating the shooting death of rapper Notorious B.I.G., also known as Biggie Smalls. He was gunned down early today. Fred Bugs, he's known as Bugsy in the New York radio world. He's a legendary New York radio air personality. He called me in the middle of the night. And he was like, you know, see, I'm hearing something about Big. I hear that Big got shot in L.A. Woke me up out of my sleep. And I'm like, man, don't believe that. And out of nowhere, as I'm tossing and turning in my bed, I just looked up. And I can see Biggie's face looking at me through the daylight. And it wasn't no mirage or nothing. What it was was Biggie's plaque. And that kind of just alerted me to just get up out the bed and just be like, you know, let me just, let me just really find out what's going on. And for some odd reason, something told me to go to Hot 97. I was on the air at Hot 97 at the time. So I took a cab and went to Hot 97. And i never forget, Brooklyn was quiet. I have never seen Brooklyn that quiet ever. It was just desolate. Going through Brooklyn and getting ready to go over to Manhattan Bridge to get to Hot 97. And then when I got to Hot 97, then it, the reality set in where, you know, the, the finality set in with I me mean, learning the news that he passed away. We was all crying. But we decided to just go on the air. Myself, Angie Martinez, and Lisa Evans, we went on the air and just took callers from the listeners that whole morning. And uh, then celebrities started calling in, like Buster Rhymes and Swiss Beats. When I went to the funeral, that's the first time I went outside, going to the funeral and then seeing him laying in the casket in a weird way. It got me to get some closure and it got me to slowly but surely start to move on. That's what he would want me to do. He would want me to move on. He would want me to continue to do whatever I was doing in my career, but also to do what I need to do to keep his name alive. Wake up. A year later, passes by March 9th, part passes by 1998. 
and I decided to do a tribute on Hot 97 to him on the day that he passed. All my life I've been considered as the worst. I started doing that every year, and then it started catching on where I would do a yearly tribute for him every year on March 9th. There are murals, New York City parks named after Biggie. The block where he grew up, St. James Place, was recently renamed Christopher Notorious B.I.G. Wallace Way. His legacy still lives on. Even in 2021, people are still finding out what his certain lines of his rap meant. They still figuring it out. It's almost like Morse code. And so for some other rappers to pay homage to use his line or use his rap in a hook of a chorus or so on and so forth, that just puts a smile on my face. Big was a student of the game when he first came in. He learned from people like Big Daddy Kane and so on. So when you see some of the new rappers um, being influenced by Big, it's, it's the circle of life. It's, it's them being influenced by Big and them, you know, um, acknowledging greatness. The saga continues. Biggie's children, Tiana and Chris Jr. or CJ, were too tiny to firsthand recall just how large their dad's impact actually was, but they're carrying his legacy forward. I always try to incorporate anything that has to do with my dad in Notorious, whether it's something that you guys don't know, like his favorite color or anything, it's always somehow incorporated, so that, was, that actually worked out perfectly. Who wants his favorite color? Black. <laughs> I spoke with them in the before times on March 9th, 2020 at a fashion show Tiana held for her brand, Notorious, on the 23rd anniversary of her dad's death. I launched my brand, uh, Think Big, on the 8th, kind of as a, a new birth kind of thing, you know, to mm -hmm. start a new day, um, shed light on a day that is obviously dark, but yeah, you can't really do much um, about the date itself, but we can just celebrate and try to bring as much positivity as we can. For Inside Edition Digital, I'm Stephanie Officer.